What's up YouTube? Today we're going to do a quick trick in Photoshop that essentially combines two images into one. The effect, double exposure. Recently I created an in-store banner concept for Audi using double exposure. Here's that, and here's how. All right guys, so first you have to pick the right image. And this can be kind of tricky, but for the best results, you're gonna choose one that has this kind of high definition or high dynamic range effect. If you have a photo that isn't super sharp, you can try to put a high pass filter on it. So we're gonna do that first, just to show you how to kind of bring back some of the detail in your photo. So we're gonna option drag our original layer just to make a copy. We're gonna call that high pass. We're gonna move that layer to the top and we're gonna go up to Filter, Other, High Pass. And you're gonna get this really weird stone looking effect, but it's totally fine, just click OK. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to your blending mode and you're gonna turn that to overlay. And as you see when I click on and off, this just makes everything a little bit more crispy. So I think we need to push the HDR effect a little bit more to make it almost unrealistic. So to do that, you're first gonna copy your original again, but we're gonna keep that original at the bottom just in case we mess anything up, it's always good to have that to go back to. And we're gonna call this HDR. Now we're gonna go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our highlights all the way, we're gonna boost our shadows, and then we're gonna just move the clarity just a smidge. And then we're gonna click OK. But I'm not a big fan of how the sunglasses came out. I want those lenses to stay dark. So because of that, we're gonna highlight our HDR filter. We're gonna go down to mask. And then we're going to paint black into those sunglasses. Just to kind of, just to save her eyes from the sun. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So now that our picture is kind of primed and ready to go, we're going to merge it. Now, once you merge it, there's no going back. So if you feel safer, you can grab all these layers by shift clicking the top one and the bottom one, and then go down here and make a group. And that's just in case you mess up and you wanna go back, um, you have that option. So we're gonna call this one main. All right, so we're gonna merge this layer. So you're gonna right click or control click on a Mac and go down to merge group. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate that layer and we're gonna actually make it black and white. So we're gonna go up to image, adjustment, black and white. And a lot of people like to mess with the different presets. High contrast blue filter actually works pretty good um, for this double exposure effect. But for now, we're just gonna live in the land of default. So we're gonna click OK, and that's looking pretty good, but let's uh, boost the contrast just a little more. So we're gonna go to Image, Adjustment, Brightness and Contrast, and we're gonna boost this contrast up to almost an unsafe level. We are going 100%. So click OK. All right, cool. So, all right, so the next thing you're gonna do is bring the photo that you want to combine and merge with this photo into your artboard. So. We're gonna use this kind of sunset image. Looks pretty nice, cause that seems like a place that she might be. All right, so now we're gonna go up to blending mode and go to screen. And you already can start to tell that we're getting that kind of double exposure effect. So we can position it differently. So I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit more to where some of that glare is hitting the edge of her sunglasses. I kind of like that. All right, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a blank layer in between your screened image and the kind of portrait. And basically this is where you will paint the color black into the layer to reveal more of the background. It's kind of a weird, weird effect, but it does work because we screened the top layer. So click your paintbrush. I like to bring my opacity down. We'll start at 40%. And as you'll see, as I start to paint in the areas, it'll bring back more of that background. So I'll bring just a little bit of that back in. And that's looking pretty good, but let's not mess up that jaw. We wanna keep that defined. All right, so to bring back more of the detail in the face, we're gonna create a mask on the scene image 
and kind of start to paint black in that layer, especially around any kind of defined edges. So we're gonna go to the sunset layer, we're gonna mask it, and then same deal, we are going to, around the edges, paint back in, or should I say paint away some of that sunset image. So we can bring our opacity up more again. And this is just so that we really start to define those edges in our picture. This will also help you start to paint away some of this background that's at a very low opacity on the sides. Now I highly recommend just um, clipping out your portrait anyway so that it's all on white, but for the purpose of time and for this video, we will not be doing that, but that is okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good and you're getting the gist of what this double exposure is. Um, but I think it's important that we define the edges even a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is option drag our black and white layer, which will duplicate it, and we're gonna put it on top. And we're gonna set the screen, or should I say the blending mode to multiply, which will get really dark, but that's totally okay because we'll adjust our opacity here until we get something that's a little bit more defined than what we're looking for. So that's pretty good, but it does get a little muddy. So we're gonna again, click on this and then mask it. And then you're gonna start to paint back in some of those bright areas that you that you still want. So that's double exposure. It's a cool effect. Um, it's fun to play with and every photo is gonna be different. So you're gonna have to make little tweaks and adjustments to change it up. But that's the gist of it. There's people that are far better than me at this effect. I just wanted to kind of give you an entry level preview um, to let you know what kind of things are out there in Photoshop. And this will hopefully elevate a project you're currently working on or one that you might work on in the future. Um, to be just a little bit better. And yeah, I know that this tutorial was kind of a lot going on and a little bit of a ramble. So for that reason, I've listed the steps in the description below. So if you wanna kind of go through it a little bit more um, easily, definitely scroll down your page and see that. If you like the tutorial stuff, um, please let me know in the comments below. I don't do them often, but I think when there's a cool effect to kind of highlight, um, it's worth mentioning. Uh, if you're not a fan of them, please let me know that too. You can dislike the video, you can comment and say this tutorial sucks, don't do tutorials, stick to other videos, um, and that is totally cool. I will take that feedback to heart. And yeah, I hope you're super well, and I'll see you next time.